Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Self Made. If you have a fear of turning on the camera and recording yourself, this video is for you. We're so excited today. It's Chris Crone, Grant Thompson, and we're going to be rocking it out with our top tips on how you get really comfortable so that your videos can really connect with your audience. All right, my friends, welcome to the beaches here in Mexico. We are here Cabo San Lucas. We thought, hey, you know what? If we're going to shoot some video, we might as well mix a little bit of business with pleasure. So we got our wives out here having a blast and so excited to have some of this time dedicated towards helping you today get really comfortable in front of the camera. Now, this is the topic that I think is going to mean the most to anyone who's just getting started because it's never an easy experience getting yourself on camera. The moment you turn it on, there's all kinds of insecurities and fears and things that pop up. We're going to give you a few tips and tricks that will help you dive in and get started right away. So the first thing that we really want to talk about, first of all, is everything that you're communicating when you're not using your voice. Because the reality is this is not like doing radio. This isn't just doing audio. In fact, audio feels like a much safer medium because it's like, I can be in my front jammies or I can be dressed however I want. I didn't even have to shower today and you wouldn't know the difference. But you know, once you turn that video on, all of a sudden people become, can become way more self-conscious and they can be start neurosing over, is my hair right? Do I look good? Is this going to work for me? And so we want to talk just first about body language. Mm. And so I want you to just kind of watch for a moment here on just a couple of basic things for you to be aware of. So this is just rapid body language one-on-one when you're in front of the camera. First of all, what do you do with these two flippity floppity things? You just keep them right here at your side. And if you are going to talk with them, we're inviting you to make sure that your hands don't get inside this little box. So take your hands right now and hold them right here and right here between gut and chest and here in front of you. And what, there's a tendency when you're nervous to communicate with body language like this and we shrink inside this box. We want you to stand up, head tall, shoulders back, chest puffed out, keep your hands at your side. If you're going to use your hands, use them like this and use them big. Because this right here, this is ultimate vulnerability. But this is what also communicates some really huge, hey, I'm comfortable here in front of the camera. So learn to do that. A couple other things on hands. Don't do this. Don't put them in your pockets and don't hide anything behind your back because this is a barrier between you and your audience even though they're joining you through the ether of the ethernet, the internet. And if you put them behind your back, it just, it seems to communicate this, this subconscious feeling like, hey, you, maybe you're not being totally upfront or maybe there's something you feel you need to hide. So get comfortable, relax. And keep those hands at your side, and when it feels right to engage them, use them intentionally and use them big, and stand tall, stand proud. That's what we want to invite you to do with your body. Really good tips, Chris, and along those lines, I just wanted to reach out to those people who don't necessarily feel comfortable in their body language yet. It's not going to be a comfortable experience, so the number one tip that I can offer is just show up and just press record. Get that camera recording. There's this fear that we have to do things perfectly the first try, but you got to remember you're not going on live television. This isn't like all of a sudden you're on Jimmy Fallon and you're presenting to the whole world. This is you in your home in a very controlled environment and you will be able to go back and edit this video. You can take as many takes as you want. You could do this over and over again. Nobody will see this until you give final approval that somebody can see this. So Hopefully that lets you feel a little more relaxed, a little bit more comfortable. But in my own personal experience, just getting the camera recording makes me feel like, okay, now it's starting. And there's no official moment where it says, all right, action. Let's get rid of that and let's just hit the action so it's already happening. And then you can show up and just very naturally begin your video. Now, the third tip that we want to share with you today is to use your voice. And uh, it brings me back to a really funny Saturday Night Live with Andy Serkis and it just some really funny, funny moments of use your voice, use your outside voice, speak up. And often when you get in front of video, it's so easy to swallow that voice in it and to, and to have it tighten and constrict. And it's almost like we're trying, we're like fighting something inside of us. It's like, hey, I want to put myself out there, but I'm really nervous to actually open up. And so we want you to practice the same thing with your voice that you're doing with your body language. If we want you relaxed and standing tall and standing confident, then use that voice and project. Put that volume out there. Step up and if you're going to say it, say it like it's something that you have conviction with. Because we know that you're nervous up front or you're shy or maybe worried what someone's going to think about you. you got to move past that. In one of our other videos, Grant's going to talk about how do you deal with the haters, right? Yeah. How do you deal with the people that you put out this beautiful, amazing content and I promise you, someone's not going to like that. And if you're going to allow that to really define the way you view yourself, it's just going to cause you to get those hands together and shrink and to pull that voice back in. So be heard and let that voice out. And if you're going to do it, say it like like you mean it and share with these people as if they're right in front of you because right now we're I don't know how many thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that we're communicating with at any given moment but it really just comes down to having that personal conviction that this is my message I am meant to share it if I am I'm not going to pull back in any way shape or form 
That's right. Along those lines, I just want to reiterate, you can do as many takes as you want. And at first, if your voice feels weak or you're not even sure what you want to say, just try saying it again until it feels natural, it feels right, and you get the take that you want. And a little trick that I like to use is as I'm editing, if I get the take that I want, I like to use a little double clap to mark the audio to let me know in editing that was the one take out of all these other butchered ones that we can go right to. And when you watch YouTube videos, you notice there's a lot of jump cuts in any video. In Hollywood, there's a lot of different jump cuts covered with B-roll. So in editing, you can take what you like and you can piece it together to make it look seamless. There's nobody on YouTube who gets a perfect first take the first try every time. So you can't expect to either. Now the next thing I want to tell you is when you're talking to the camera, you've got to realize you're not just talking to a camera, you're talking to the world. So it's very important to make eye contact with the lens of the camera itself. And at first, this is going to feel a little bit awkward because it's just this piece of black equipment that's sitting there staring that's a at you. Person? <laughs> but this is actually a person on the other side of a computer that we are looking at. And if, if we don't see it that way, if we're looking at the LCD screen or if we're looking at the camera guy behind it or looking off in the distance, that's going to feel really awkward to the person watching your video. What you need to do is look right at the lens of the camera and imagine that is their eyeball. When you talk to somebody, it's very important to make eye contact and the same thing with the camera itself. It's very important to look at the eye of the camera and I find that if you focus on the little ball in the center at the back, it gives the same depth perception as if you're looking into somebody's eyes. It makes a very meaningful connection and anyone watching your video is going to feel that connection and feel a relation to you personally as a result. Okay, now here's another tip. If you're going to be producing a 5 or a 10 or a 15 minute video, that's a lot of information to keep in your head along the way. And so this is where we have the beauty of editing, mm -hmm. which means you don't have to have it memorized. In fact, I find that if my mind is so busy being cluttered with what I'm going to be communicating that I can actually get emotionally disconnected or even disconnected from myself and then the, the content just doesn't come out the right way. So mm -hmm. one of the things, we don't need it for this particular video, but some videos I do, I'll actually have a backdrop and a whiteboard and we'll actually write some notes so that I can just pause and I only really want to keep in my head the information that is the next step for me to communicate. And my goal is to actually have me completely and entirely engaged with you. And so having a little cheat sheet or some notes that you can reference in between these small segments, you have 10 little small segments, you put them all together, you got, boom, you got a 10 minute video, but you didn't have to worry about juggling it all or, or having a one take wonder. Like Grant said, you can take as many takes as you need and it's okay to have notes for you to reference. Mm -hmm. And just remember that the clock isn't ticking. I know there's this pressure that we feel like the camera's rolling. I got to perform. I got to optimize the experience. But literally, I mean, if we do a little experiment right now, if I were just to stop talking right here for about 30 seconds. That's pretty amazing. In editing, we can literally cut all that out and we go right into the next sentence. So if you're not sure what to say, say part of your sentence, think about the next one, say your next sentence, and in editing, you can splice it together so it seems virtually seamless. Yeah. So take the pressure off, have fun, relax, and treat the camera like a person. If you had a good friend that you were explaining your concept to, standing right there, how would you talk to them? Because ultimately, that's what you're doing. You've got a good friend on the other side of the internet, and all you're doing is talking and connecting with them. Now, it's kind of ironic in the world that we live in today that the two number one fears, you may not know this, but the number one fear is not death. That's number two. The number one fear is public speaking. And so a lot of times we get nervous because this is actually is going to feel like a form of public speaking. And so one of the things we want to invite you to do is to actually go ahead and click the website and come join us on our self-made website where we'll share with you yeah. more tips and tricks of what you can do. It's in the link below. But also, we're going to share with you some of our speaker boot camps. Okay, we've aligned ourselves with another one of my companies where we'll actually step out and show you how to become a professional speaker. We'll actually do a number of exercises and I want to share with you one of those exercises you can do right now. You see, often Grant, if you look at your journey and I look at my journey and it's like with time, didn't we become more confident? Yes, very much so. Very and there's a way so. to become more confident more faster. And the way to do that is instead of just slowly becoming a little bit more confident with every passing video with time, because that exposure, you are going to gain confidence. But if you want to actually have a little tip right now on how to like bump the ceiling and actually get there, I want to invite you to practice with and without camera, actually going over the top. Actually allow yourself to open up mm. your voice. Get a little bit more wild. Get a little more crazy. Practice your hands. It's not how your real videos are really going to land, but instead of always trying to get to the mark, go yeah. beyond the mark just for the sake of practicing, right? Yeah. Go ahead and create a silly, crazy moment for yourself and, and, and practice what it is to use those that full set of pipes. Listen, if you're uncomfortable singing, 
open up those pipes and sing a song and get out there and just give yourself a chance to just open up. It's probably not how you're going to be on video with what you're going to publish, but it is a faster way to say, hey, if I can get a little crazy, then I can scale it back to normal. It'll also give you some fun little video clips for your private collection that nobody will ever see. <laughs> that should give you a pretty it's good for laugh. for posterity, right? And I also want you to remember, when, when you're saying things or you're in a different environment where things feel really awkward, Life is always better with background music. And even though you can't hear the music right now, by the time this goes into editing, you can hear music starting to fade in and it changes the whole ambience of the entire video. Everything sounds better with background music. It's so true. And it's amazing what you can do in the editing process. So even if you feel uncomfortable now, just go with it. Just give it your all and then see how it turns out in the final footage. Because very often, the footage turns out a lot better than you expected it ever did while you're filming. Awesome. Grant, do you have any final tips that you'd like to advise for anyone that's jumping on the camera today and they're about to really start putting this into practice so that they can do it with as much confidence as possible? Yes, very much so. I have one fantastic tip that I want to share with you right now. I can't remember what it is, so I'm going to check my phone and get right back with you after this jump cut. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Watch this. This is like real life happening right now because this is how you do it. There is one more thing he wants to say. He can't remember what it is and it's totally okay that he doesn't because of the magic of editing. Nate, do not edit this part out because actually we're demonstrating exactly how you let this roll. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at those tiny notes. So Grant has taken like, so we break our videos up generally into like three segments, an introduction and an outro, but in the middle of the content. And so before we actually do the shoot, Grant and I will actually look at the content. We'll, we'll produce maybe four or five bullet points, maybe six or seven bullet points to remind us what we want to do. So what he's doing right now is he's consulting his notes uh, so that he could have been present here before. And now he's going to check that so he can get present again with this final thing, which is dun, 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 drum roll. Um, I actually hit all my notes, but I just want to recap. I think one of the most important things that you could do is treat the camera like a person. And remember, uh, you can always edit. So get a little bit dramatic, push the boundaries, do things that are, are a little bit uncomfortable to you. And if you're not sure if that's going to work out or not, do another take, do three or four different styles. Maybe you want to do one where you're just very quiet and very somber and just like you normally are. Maybe you want to do something where you're just throwing your arms around and you're getting a little bit crazy. You can do three or four different takes and then in editing, select the one that you actually feel resonates with the message that you're trying to drive. So it's, it's a game, it's experiment, and I want you to feel like it is. This isn't being broadcast to Hollywood and just because it's being recorded doesn't mean the whole world has access to it now. You have full control and it's actually going to influence your life. Talking to a camera will help you talk to people a lot better because you get instant feedback on who you are and what areas you can improve. And for me, the final advice that I would give you, probably the most important thing, is to be authentic. It's yeah. to be who you are. Yeah. And uh, if you try to pr pretend for a while trying to be someone else or, wow, I see Chris, he'll use his arms really big or I'll, I'll see Grant get really intense. In the end, where you're really going to connect with your audience is when you're being authentic and genuine. Yeah. And there's a discovery journey when you're with the camera of learning, wow, what, is, what does it really look like? Instead of just showing the best sides of me, what does it look like for me to just be me and show who I really am? But also amplify that so that I can really connect with them and let them experience what that is. If you're being true to who you are, that is really ultimately how you're going to form a connection. Because, yeah, we could say that this video is about being comfortable on camera, but there's a bigger goal than that. And the goal is... If another human being through the magical screen is going to be on the other side watching this, then let's form a connection so that they can actually see who you really are, how you really show up. That's where they're going to decide whether they want to hit subscribe and ring the bell or whether they're going to ditch you and see someone else that is maybe more authentic or maybe mm -hmm. matches more and resonates with who they are. So be authentic. And if you're ready to be yourself, that's what YouTube is all about. I think it's known for people who just are themselves and they're gaining a lot of notoriety, popularity and making a very good, decent income just being themselves and having the vulnerability to open up on camera. So if you're ready to experiment with your camera, make your own videos, come take our self-made training. We, we want to give you the shortcuts that'll help launch you to success as quickly as possible. Hit that website. We'll see you guys on the flip side.